lounging, son. All right, welcome back to the Comic Lounge. My name's Ryan. Today, I'm going to be talking about a book that I have been extremely excited for, the relaunch of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles by Jason Aaron and probably the best collection of talent that has ever graced the pages of Ninja Turtles in its 40 plus years, besides its original creators of Peter Laird and Kevin Eastman. Joel Jones writes the first issue, Raphael Albuquerque on issue two, Cliff Chang on issue three, Chris Burnham on issue four, and Derek Robertson on number five. But we're here to talk issue one. Before I get into it, I want to remind everybody, if you are not already subscribed to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Check out some of the awesome content on the channel, including a playlist dedicated just to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Um, now, let's get into this. We've got an amazing cover by Raphael Albuquerque. Extremely uh, dope concept in terms of like the whole backgrounds, green, basic, you know, basically green, black, and white. And then the only touch of color besides the green are their bandanas. Uh, really dig Raphael's take on the turtles. You know, Jason Aaron and Joel Jones do not disappoint on this first part. Love the story arc's name. We got Return to New York. Long time colors. It's been with the book basically from the beginning. Rhonda Pattinson is the colorist. We got Sean Lee on letters. You know, we open up and Raph is in prison. And some time has passed, you know, between this volume of Turtles and the previous volume that ended with, you know, issue 150 that Sophie Campbell did a great 50 issue run. If you haven't checked that out, um, I suggest checking out the entire IDW run. You know, all those IDW collections are out, the hardcovers, you know, all the trades have been collected. Um, so really easy to jump in and check that out. Time, like I said, time has passed since issue 150. We open up and Raph's in prison. We don't know how he's got there. Typical Jason Aaron fashion, this dialogue, this inner narration is just phenomenal. You know, talking about, you know, wherever he's walking, whispers follow. They wonder what he did to get locked up. The people are, you know, throwing out all these different ideas of what he could have done to get himself locked up in prison with them. You know, and him being the only mutant in there. It's only humans and him. So, like, what happened here, right? You know, talking about how, you know, everybody wants him dead. Want to, you know, they want to shank him. No one's mustered up the guts yet, but someday someone will. And as he says, it won't work out for them when they do. Joelle Jones just, I mean, I absolutely adore her work. I love her stuff so much. And what a great choice to pair her up on this, you know, issue with Raph. Uh, she does such a great job. An amazing looking Turtles book. And you get this, you know, Raph, you know, coming down, we get the full suit. The prison suit on him. We got the, you know, over, completely covering the top of his head, red bandana, which is, you know, makeshift. You know, he talks about how he's alone. Name's Raphael. Raph to his friends, and it's been a long time since anybody called him Raph. And he's cool with it, you know? Like, there's a reason he's here. We don't quite find out what it is. He was talking, you know, how people stick to their own, and he's, so he's really, truly alone in here. What I think is pretty interesting, too, is... Raph's not necessarily one that you'd call a reader. He's the bruiser of all the, you know, the four brothers, the fighter, but yet his cell is jam-packed with books. And I just thought that was an interesting little little thing. Like, why would that be there, right? It's definitely there for a reason. And, you know, he talks about how all the cells go silent at night unless you got the senses of a shadow warrior, which he is. He's a ninja, so he hears the noises going on. He hears the, the stranglers that sob to themselves when they sleep. The spree killers who beg their uh, dead mothers for forgiveness. And on this night, he's hearing three aggravated assaulters who have just finished their escape tunnel. So that awakens him up. And so he's obviously, if he's heard them breaking through, that means he's been listening to them this whole time, right? And so they break down into the sewer, but little do they know they're about to run straight into Raph. He breathed deep. Rage clears my mind. Anger makes me calm. I got no words for these clowns. You want banter? You came to the wrong turtle. What I got to say, I say with fists. The writing, phenomenal. The action, the art. It's just such a great book. It's such a great time to be a Turtles fan, man. This is the 40th anniversary that we're in right now. You know, that 40th anniversary I talked about, that special, was phenomenal. Go check out that video if you haven't already seen it. So much other cool stuff is coming up, What right, for Turtles. This being like the spearhead for it all. You know, you got the sequel to Last Ronin that's out this year. And Night Watcher that's going to come out. Which we'll talk about that later when we talk about that ad. Mutant Nation, all that stuff. So good. And 
I can't think of a person that I would rather write turtles. If you ask me who's got like heart and grit in a lot of their stories, Jason Aaron is the writer that comes to mind. One of my favorite writers, you know, Scalped is still one of my favorite series of all time of his. His Thor stuff, his Avenger stuff, his Wolverine, his Punisher, his Ghost Rider. And now he's doing DC stuff. He even did an Uncle Scrooge book recently. But Turtles seems like such a match made in heaven when I first heard about it. And he didn't disappoint. I don't want to say he... He didn't just meet my expectations, which were already high. He surpassed them. And this issue is just so good in so many ways. You know, we get him like thinking about his brothers as he's going in the sewer. They had said how it smelled like freedom. He's like, these idiots were wrong. This place don't smell like... This place don't... This place don't smell at all like freedom. It's a sewer. Smells like what you'd expect. A bunch of crap best forgotten. And he, you know... We don't get to see Joel really show the turtles because like each of these first five issues are focused on specific characters. The first four being the brothers and issue five kind of being the return to New York. So getting to see this was really cool. I love this shot. This would be such a great poster, you know, at the New York skyline. Raph, next morning, you know, that everything's on lockdown. The warden's running through. We've got three inmates unconscious in the drainage shuttle. Everybody needs to be accounted for. And so Raph, you know, he's, he's waking up. He's th thinking about... You know, all the different food in New York City, whether it's, you know, something from a street cart on Central Park West, you know, the deli along 2nd Avenue, got a call out to Rupert's Pizza, which has been around since the beginning of the, you know, IDW run. Thinking about abandoned tunnels and sealed up subways. He's just thinking about all this stuff that reminds him of New York. And, and, and even coming to this conclusion of like, you know, that, you know, maybe he belongs here and with these type of people. You know, like, he's all rage and gristle and bile wrapped up in a turtle shell. Such a great line, you know. I'm a walking life support system for my knees and knuckles. This is where I belong. This is home. And even getting shit talked to by to him by a cop. Then we see him on the yard. And somebody comes up behind him and starts talking. He's like, you knew, didn't you, that they were uh, they were going to try to skip. But you did nothing. And <laughs> Raph, in typical Raph fashion, he's like, yeah, there's not much fun in that. Why would I stop them then? Then he's like, what do you think you're here for? Fun? Not the food, certainly. And then we see that this warden, like, there's something else, right? Like, he's like, it seems you've forgotten what it was that brought you to prison. The mess of trouble you'd made for yourself before I intervened. So he brings him to this prison, and they got something going on. And, I mean, he even says that I own you, mutant. So there's this whole back and forth between them. Um, I'll let you guys, you know, you guys got to pick this book up, obviously. I don't want to get too much into it. But there's this back and forth that they go on. And basically, Raph is, you know, quote unquote, working for the warden while he's locked up. Right? And he gets awoken up a little bit too late and sees this murder. And it's a dirty guard. He's the, he smuggles contraband for the prisoners. But he can see by the wounds that it wasn't some stab happy inmate. Right? And he goes out. And who's he greeted by? And, we, and you know, we see these ninjas and... What I would assume is the foot, but we don't see their insignia. So he even calls out, like, you know, what Jonah do you, Jonah do you, what Jonah do you serve? And, like, oh, okay, you have a foul silence. And he even says that they remove their tongues as an offering to their masters, their ninja. And he's like, you know, all right, cool, we'll do this your way. And then we get another action-packed scene. Joelle's so good at this. I mean, she's just so phenomenal at fight scenes. I mean, she did some really great Batman stuff uh, during – he she did some stuff during Tom King's run. And, you know, you got Lady Killer, oh, her creator own book. She did the Wonder Girl book. As much as I'm excited for the rest of the artists, it's like, it's so hard to be like, well, which one would I have rather seen on a whole arc? But that's the beautiful thing about it is getting all these artists, getting their takes on the turtles that we've never seen before and getting just, you know, almost like one shots while being part of the overall narrative. And Ninja starts flying, swords are flying, kicks, punches. And now he says it. He's like, you know, been attacked by these jokers enough to recognize the Foot Clan when I see him. But even says that last thing I knew, they're supposed to be different under Karai. Less murdery, as he says. So now we're seeing like, okay, what's going on with the foot, right? Like this, you know, Raph even's like taken aback that they're, that they're going this route because, you know, under Karai's leadership, they weren't doing this kind of stuff. But then he even calls out the book thing. This is what I love that Jason Aaron did. My cell isn't filled with books because I love to read. It's because I was born angry. I grew up living in dumpsters. Waking every day, starving for a fight, I've always found one. So he has these books strapped to his chest, right, as a way to protect himself. 
he yells out like, oh, what, you guys don't want any more? And then he realizes, oh, shit, they're not there to kill him. And they fucking kill the warden. And so their deal that they had was in the safe that's now empty. And then he's left with what? The warden with his hot, the, stabbed with the size. The cops come up. They fucking slam him against the wall. And they slam him against the wall. And then Rafa isn't going to be taken down that easily. Then we see him jump straight into the sewer. And he realizes they're not just coming for him. They're going to come for his brothers. And he's going to go seek them out, as he says, wherever the hell they are. And then we come to New York City. And we see this district attorney. This guy that's, you know, about to be, as he says, the next district attorney. What are you doing? You can't just, you know, all of every single one of your badges tossed in the East River. We get this dude, Hale, who's like, you're not going to be the next DA. That's going to be me. You know, clearly this dude's crooked. So this is a new character that we're getting introduced to, right? And he even says, you tell the Foot Clan New York City's ours. So now what I can only imagine, what is it? what's it going to be? We got the New York underworld versus the Foot. A lot of cool things can come from that. And as it says, to be continued with Michelangelo, we get a great editorial from the whole uh, Turtles editorial team talking about the 40th anniversary, talking about what we can expect next, including the new series, Night Watcher by Junie Botfero Pay, which is going to star somebody under that Night Watcher vigilante identity. We got Mutant Nation, which will have some two stories in each issue. Look at all these covers that came out for issue number one. So dope. Again, what a great time to be a Turtles fan. We got the 40th anniversary special that came out. Black, white, and green. Night Watcher, Mutant Nation, Saturday Morning Adventures. There's a Turtles book for every single fan out there. I can't recommend this book enough. Get out there right now. Pick up this book, which coincidentally is also, as of now, the best-selling book of 2024. Has sold insane amounts. And um, while you're at it, make sure you like, follow, subscribe. Hit that bell icon so you're notified every time a new vid drops. And on that note...